so full, the stars are so bright, and my hand is steady, my touch is light. Look in my eyes, hold on real tight, and I want you, my darling, across Texas tonight. I want you, my darling, across We're pleased to welcome John Boylan with us here today. John is one of the most successful record producers contemporary music and he's currently celebrating over 40 years in the industry he's produced over 50 albums which have sold more than 40 million records he has a Grammy and three nominations his work crosses all boundaries of music from rock to country and from children's music to film soundtracks the uh, list of John's albums is pretty amazing he's worked with Linda Ronstadt uh, the Dillards Copperfields album Rick Nelson Pure Prairie League I worked with Little River Band, Boston, Commander Cody, Ario Speedwagon, and Quarter Flash, just to name a few. Uh, uh, he now uh, works at Citrus College, as well as being a full-time manager for Linda Ronset. John's a longtime L22 user, we'll talk a little bit about that. And he's recently been uh, test driving a Hilo, which I'm told I will not get back. We'll talk about that in a few minutes as well. No way. One thing we like to ask people to get started is, why do you do what you do? You know, I, uh, I, don't, I think the reason is I can't do anything else. Uh, it's, it's, that's really, as John Lennon famously said, life is what happens to you while you're making plans. And that's main, mainly what happened to me. I, was, uh, I, I first was exposed to music when I was five years old. I was in the hospital because I had measles and my mother was pregnant. So my father, being a doctor, got me out of the house and into a hospital where he was. And the, one of the orderlies was a big R&B fan, and he taught me about R&B post-World War II. And uh, I used to listen to the radio with him and, while I was there, and it was a lot of fun. And I was hooked for life at that point. I played in bands. I was a staff songwriter in Tin Pan Alley. And eventually I, I, I got to record production, probably because I... It was the easiest path I could take at the time. Very good. Uh, we're going to listen to a couple of cuts, and you want to set up a little bit about the Linda Ron set we're going to hear? Uh, my, my mastering uh, station has, has been a really high-end uh, Windows 7 machine, which I uh, had a PCI card. I had an L22 in it for many years, still do. Uh, and I would use either Pro Tools or Digital Performer through that rig and uh, then lately they were kind enough to send me a helo to test drive and as i said i don't think they're getting it back uh, because it really works great so i set it up with my mac laptop and these are the last two uh mastering projects i did the one you see up there i did in digital performer nine it's a two cd best of for linda ronstadt which came out last summer and as you can see i set it up uh, with each song on its own channel and with all the plugins that you can see and when you when you're working with mastering like this the plugins become very important for example here's one i use a lot it's called air eq and uh when you when you're using a very subtle eq like that it's absolutely critical that your audio interface be the highest end possible because you can't hear the subtleties of some of these EQs and some of the other plugins, unless you've got a really high-end audio, and I found the L22 to be great, and the Hilo, amazing. The first time I heard it, I couldn't believe the detail in the, in the so each sound. I could pick it out very easily. Also, the stereo image kind of popped into uh, focus. I could tell where anything was across the panning spectrum. Just amazing, very tight bottom end, very realistic flat across the entire frequency response with no artifacts that I could tell. And when you're using plugins, that becomes critical. The other thing I really like about my Lynx products has been the drivers and the support. I've used a lot of different interfaces. I've had portable ones for demos and classes. And some of the drivers are not, quite frankly, up to snuff. But when I've been using the Hilo, even with complicated setups like this, 
The drivers are rock solid and nothing ever seems to go wrong. And I really, it's much appreciated when you get into your workflow. The last thing you want to do is have to reboot everything. So this is the uh, two CD set that I, uh, I did on Linda. And let's just play a little of it. Anybody who can remember this track is, is at least as old as I am. Or no, maybe not. This was her first big hit, 1967. Drum. Oh, can you tell by the way I run Every time you make eyes at me And of course, uh, we, we're leading up also to all, all of her hits are on this two CD set Like this one Coming up This one you can see A uh, different drum I, I used absolutely no plugins. Uh, this one I had to use quite a few The difficulty with mastering a project that goes across a long time span is that you've got a song from 1967, from 74, up to 1990, and they all have to flow seamlessly from one thing to another, and it becomes very difficult thing to do, which is why, again, you need phenomenal audio interface to be able to do your critical listening. The, uh, the project I'm doing now, I only need the glasses when I want to see. So. What is the source material you usually start oh, on, with? On this project, the source material was uh, all low-res digital, unfortunately. Uh, it was, they were cut during the 80s and uh, all on Mitsubishi 32 tracks or the old Sony 24-track digital. So they're low-res digital. What I did is I followed the Bob Katz uh, paradigm. I upsampled everything using the Isotope sample rate converter, which is the best affordable one you can get. And I, I did everything at 2496, as you can see here. Across the two-track bus, uh, I'll have a, a Waves loudness meter. This helps to judge from track to track. And I'll also have uh, other plugins across the two-track bus. But uh, I, my other MO is to have location points, one at the beginning of each song, in the middle, and at the end. That way you can judge the spread times, you can judge the overall volume, and you can judge the start times. So it's, uh, that's a handy way to do it. This uh, particular uh, track is written by Rodney Crowell. This is the trio, which is Linda Ronstadt, Emmy Lou Harris, and Dolly Parton. And they recorded two albums. So this project's going to come out this coming June, and you are the first people on earth to hear what I'm about to play because the third disc, we're reissuing the first two discs, and the third disc, which I just finished mastering, consists of 20 unreleased tracks, uh, never heard before. Some are alternate mixes or alternate performances, but this is a song that's never been heard. It's a Rodney Crowell song called Waltz Across Texas. It's Dean Parks on guitar. And starts with Emmy. The wind can blow cold, it moans and it cries. World premiere right here at the Lynx booth. <laughs> when it carries the sound of a thousand goodbyes. But if you listen tonight on that high lonely play, you just hear my voice. I really like Rodney Cross, right? I'm a big fan. Name. As it calls out your name Now Dolly and Linda join in for harmonies You've been on a road that just don't seem to end Couldn't get any better than that Where that broken old heart of yours won't ever mend Oh, but you'll never know what's beyond the next two with your face to the ground and your feet standing still With your face to the ground and your feet standing still The moon is so full, the stars are so bright And my hand is steady, my touch is light Look in my eyes, hold on real So 
you world premiere of that one. Uh, this was recorded nice. by George Massenberg, a really good friend of mine and a phenomenal engineer, legendary guy. Just so you know, our signal flow is, is really quite simple here. We're coming right off of John's computer into Hilo by Thunderbolt, out of Thunderbolt line outs to the speakers, by actually the monitor outs to the speakers. So it's a pretty direct signal flow. Sounds pretty good. And this is the exact signal flow I used when I tweaked the final master about three days ago and I turned in the DDP folder to Warner Brothers. Very good. Uh, how did you first come across the, uh, the L22 card? Yeah, I was looking for a, I had a, I had a Motu set up with a G5 at the time, and uh, it was working great for recording, but I wanted a, a really high-end two-track mastering, so I went to my friend Jim Pace, he's one of my homies from Buffalo, and he runs a company here in town called Audio Individual Design, and I asked him for advice, and he rec highly recommended the L22, so I bought it on the spot. I had a little trouble getting the the, uh, the the thing set up. I called the company, and to my absolute delight, the technical support was totally seamless and easy, and I had the thing set up in about 15 minutes. I've been using it ever since. They've updated the drivers every time. At that time, I was using Windows XP, and right now it's a Windows 7 machine. I tried 10, but I'm not sure I like it yet, so I went back to 7 on this machine. Uh, it seems very rock solid, um, and that's how I first got it, and I'm keeping it. Okay, very good. And just finally, can you tell us a little bit, you're, you're very active in the program at Citrus College, and can you tell us a little bit about that? It's a great program. One of my colleagues was here a second ago, Steve Dietrich. He teaches live sound. He, the guy's amazing. This is a one-year certificate program at Citrus College out in Glendora, and i got to tell you, it is the bargain of the century. This uh, program, which takes an entire year's commitment, if you did it at Full Sail or one of those places, it would run you about fifty to $60,000. Here, for an in-state person, it's less than $5,000. Uh, it's basically $49 a credit. Uh, we teach everything. Pro Tools, Digital Performer, and Logic are the DAWs we use. Uh, we have a full-on two-studio complex with SSL, Duality and other SSLs. We've got all kinds of outboard gear. We teach live sound. We teach acoustics. We teach everything that you need to know, including an industry course, which I teach about uh, how the industry works, or sometimes I call it what's left of the industry. It's just a little title I came up with. Um, but by and large, it's just a great certificate. I, if anybody has a student or a friend who wants once again, the audio business, this is one of the great bargains. Okay, great. Thank you very much, John. Appreciate your time. Phil, always happy. Thank you very much. Oh, the stars are so bright.